All right, hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Today we got a good show for you. I'm here with Quentin, and we're going to talk about how to do a software update on the Microtech 3 controller. Now, the Microtech 3 controller is the uh, standard controller for all uh, unitary uh, Daikin applied equipment. So it'd be in rooftop units, vertical self contains, chillers, and uh, it's a really common controller. Siemens uh, makes it, and um, and there's a it's a it's a great controller. Uh, but there are some steps to it that uh, you need to know, and we're going to go over those steps today. From the tools you need to download the the software, and uh, the steps you need to go through to make that process easy. All right, Quinn. So what we got going on here today? Yeah. So we're going to go over the software update procedure of a Microtech three. So there's a few reasons why you might need to update the software. Um, if the if the unit is you know suddenly starting to act erratically and you know there's some unexplainable things happening, um, you might need to update the software. Um, anytime you talk to Technical Response Center uh, mm -hmm. for Daikin, that's usually going to be their first step. Yeah, is TRC. Let's go ahead, TRC. Yeah. Go ahead and update the software. Yeah. Okay. And so this is a really common call that we get, but it's a call that we only get once because once you do it once, you're set. You know how to do it. Okay. It's super easy. So there's a couple of things that you'll need in order to do this software update. The tools. The tools. Yeah, and they're really basic tools. Nothing really over the top here. You're going to need a laptop. You're going to need an SD card, two gigabyte preferred. Okay. And then you need um, a means of uh, connecting the SD card to your PC. Okay. Some PCs don't even have the ability to accept an SD card like mine, for instance, so I actually have to have an adapter. Anything specific about it? Yeah, so especially on the older vintage stuff, it has to be a two gigabyte SD card. Some of the later vintage stuff, you can use a larger SD card, um, but generally we just go ahead and keep the, the two gig SD card on the truck because it works with all platforms. Okay, so it can't be bigger than two gig. It cannot be bigger than two gig, especially on the older vintage okay, stuff. Okay, that would be frustrating. Absolutely. I've okay. had people call me on a roof on an older vintage, you know, piece of gear, McQuay or something like mm -hmm. that, trying to do a software update and it wouldn't work because they had a, two, a 32 gig yeah. SD card and Which it just wouldn't, pretty it much wouldn't standard, work. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is one of those things that, again, you may not be able to find it locally. Right. You know, because most of the time now, you know, the smallest that you're going to be able to find is a 32 gig at, you know, your local convenience okay. store. So, just standardize on a, on a 2 gig SD Standardize on a, okay. yes sir, absolutely. Any speed or anything else we need to know about? No, uh, the rest of the stuff that we're going to go over in, in the formatting section, it'll be super simple. Um, but just make sure that um, whenever you do go to use your SD card, make sure that the lock switch is off. Okay. But outside of that, we're going to cover the rest All of right. the programming. All right, let's dig in. All right, so the first thing that you need is your laptop, which has internet access, because okay. we're going to go on to Daikin Applied's website and download the software that we need. Okay. Okay? So first things first, we will go on the World Wide Web, and then we're going to type in Daikin Applied, whoops, Daikin Applied Application Software. The first result that pops up under daikinapplied.com is going to be the one we go to. And then whenever we scroll down, you're going to see different options for different types of software. Okay, so the controller configuration that we're working with here today, this controller came off of a vertical self-contained unit. And so we'll use that version of the software okay. just for simplicity's sake. But the process will be the same with each type of gear. Okay, so it's very important that you know what type of unit that you're working on. Okay, so you don't want to try to upload vertical self-contained or Maverick 2 software into a Rebel unit, for instance. Yeah. That won't function properly. Yeah. You're going to run into some issues. So just be mindful of that. So all we do is click the software download. And as you can see, it is now downloaded. Okay, so now we're going to take our SD card, and for me, I have to insert it into my adapter, plug it into the computer, okay? So now I'm going to go to show this file in the folder where it's downloaded. There it is. I'm going to take that entire file and drive it over to my SD card. Okay, so you downloaded that file from the Daikin website mm -hmm. onto your laptop, and, exactly. then you, and then you're just dumping it onto the SD card. Dump it onto the SD card. Yep. Now these next few steps are extremely important. We want to right click that file folder and click extract all. Okay, so we are extracting it from the zip folder. If we leave it in the zip folder, then the um, controller will not be able to recognize it. Okay. It'll be, you know, protected. So you see now, I'm going to drag two windows here to make this a little bit simpler. You see now in the unzipped folder, notice this one has a zipper, this one does not, this one's open. Here's all the individual files. Okay, so we're going to 
copy all of these files, or just highlight all the files, and drag them over to the root directory of the USB drive. Okay. All right, so we release. So you're taking it out of that subfolder and you're, you're, you're making it a initial folder. Exactly, gotcha. exactly. We're putting it just all on the base of the USB, or in this case, the SD card. Got it. So we'll right click, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these folders off of the SD card. And all that we're going to leave is going to be our uh, files that are gonna be uploaded to our Microtech 3 controller, okay? And you notice, um, if you're out in the field and you lose internet access and you don't have access to this video, fortunately, Daikin is actually going to include a document that shows you step-by-step -step how to do this process. Boom. Okay. So now, we're going to right-click and eject. So now our SD card is ready to go out into the world and be put into a controller. Okay? All right. So we will remove our SD card and we're now in front of our Microtech 3 controller. Yeah. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to input your password into the Microtech 3. The password is 63, 63. And what password is that for? This is like admin level. This is the highest level available to the field. Okay. So whenever you do put in this password, be careful. You know, there's some things that you can change that if you're not familiar with the controller, um, you can get yourself in, yeah. in some trouble. Don't blame us, please. Yeah, don't blame us. Mm -hmm. Blame. We're, we're just here to help. That's right. All right, so now we want to scroll down to the control mode. We're going to change it from whatever it's currently set to, be it auto net, um, cool only, heat only. We're going to change it to off. And we're going to press enter. So now you want to put the SD card in the controller Make sure that the sticker is facing away from you, okay? And you're going to slide it in the little slot on the top, and you're going to feel and hear an audible click. Now, you want to scroll down to the service settings menu. And we want to scroll down now to save slash restore settings. And you want to click save to card. We're gonna change that value from no to yes. And this is going to save the configuration of the controller to your SD card. So after we do this software update, we can put the configuration right back in with no problems. So now, we can go ahead and back out of this menu. And if you want to confirm that you have um, saved the settings uh, to the SD card from the controller, you simply extract it Put it in your, back in your computer and see if there's additional files. Okay. And okay. if you don't do that, you're going to go back and do all the parameters from scratch. Exactly. Yeah. Which, honestly, that's usually what I do anyways. Usually I want to go through and start over with a brand new clean slate because yeah. if I have a unit that's performing erratically, I don't want any of that bad juju left behind. I just start over fresh, put the configuration code back in as if it's a brand new startup, mm -hmm. and just start over fresh. But if you're not extremely familiar with this controller, you may try to save those parameters and put them back in. Um, that way, yeah. you know, you have a, a better starting point. And you got to know the parameters that, that are required. You have to know the parameters that are required, and you have to understand the, the language um, that they're using in the controller. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I always advise people to do anytime they're doing a software update is go into your BMS communications menu and extract all of that data physically. You know, write it down by hand, take a picture of it, um, especially if... Um, if it's a controls contractor that you're not familiar with, then it would be difficult to get that information back. So, you know, baud rate, instance number, um, MAC address, any of that type of IP address, any of that type of pertinent information that's going to pertain to the BMS communications, make sure you store that because sometimes it's not going to save. Okay? Yeah, got it. So now we are ready to do the actual software update. We can now remove power from the controller by removing the 24 volt control circuit. We're going to take our Allen key. One millimeter. One millimeter, or I think the other option is a 3 ths And we're going to depress this button. But first, we're gonna wait about 10 seconds while the controller is powered off. Our SD card is clicked into place, and we're gonna go ahead and push down on that button. And you're gonna hold that button down. Now you can apply power by reinserting the power uh, connector 
and you notice how the light is flashing green, you're going to hold this down until it flashes green, red, green, red, green, red three times, and then you can release. And you're going to wait for that orange light to illuminate. It may take a few seconds after the red, green, red, green flash. Sometimes it will do it immediately. Now you can remove power from the controller and you're going to wait about 60 seconds. So 10 seconds, 60 seconds. Who tells you the, the time? Is that just experience? Depending or? on who you talk to, you get a different answer. Mm -hmm. Be honest with you, I don't think that it really matters that much. Mm -hmm. Wait a few seconds, take in uh, some of the surroundings of the building and, you know, I've never had any issues based on the yeah. time that I power the controller down. Gotcha. Maybe somebody has. If you have, maybe chime in in the comments. Yeah. So at this point, I will go ahead and power the controller back up. All right. And so now we're going to input our password. 6363. And we're going to go down to the service menus again. And if you saved your parameters, we'll go to the save and restore settings. And then we're going to load from card. Change that value to yes. And then we're going to wait for it to go back to no. The controller is going to force a reboot. You're going to now input your password, 6363. And you want to confirm that the software version in the controller now matches the version that you downloaded. So you're going to scroll down until you see a menu that says about this AHU. You're going to select it and then look at the application version. Okay, these last two characters are usually a quick indicator um, to let you know if the software update was successful. If you see any type of parenthesis or bracket on the end of this, try to do the software update again because the file was corrupted. Okay? And so you mentioned the AHU, it. but uh, you know, we, we downloaded a vertical self-contained yeah. update. Yep. Is everything going to be labeled as AHU or? Yep. Okay. Yep. So even, Except maybe the chillers. Okay. If, so even if it says AHU, we're, we're still doing vertical That's right. self-contained. Got yep. it. Absolutely. And so if that version matches the version that you downloaded, then you're all set. And you are ready to operate. So you want to make sure that you don't have any alarms. This controller has an alarm um, due to an um, open interlock. But if you have any alarms, check those alarms and make sure that your configuration code is correct. If your configuration code has changed, you may need to change that configuration code back to the factory setting. The configuration code is going to be listed on a white sticker inside of the unit. Okay. And so if you do need to change those configuration code settings to match the white sticker, you can simply scroll down. What is the, the configuration code? The unit, that's a great question. So the unit configuration code is basically, how was this unit optioned? Okay, all, the, all the specials, anything Absolutely. That, was, that was specifically designed for that piece of gear to do a certain, exactly. a certain spec. What type of VFD does it have? Does gotcha. it have ECM fans? What type of burner section does it mm -hmm. have? Does it have heat in it at all? All of that type of information okay. resides in the unit Got configuration. It. And so you can scroll down to the unit configuration menu, and then you can make any necessary changes. You, know that any, you notice that any one of those explanations there has a number beside it. Mm -hmm. As you follow along the configuration code string, you want to make sure that your numbers match up with that configuration code string. So once it matches up, you can go, come up here and, and apply the changes, change that value from no to yes, and then you should be all set. Okay. And that's pretty much how you do a software update. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, the first one can be a little bit intimidating, but after you've done one, you, you need to sit it. with it, run it, run it for a while, make sure everything's working. Yeah, yeah, just work. do a normal checkout. You know, make sure that everything is working like it's supposed to. Check your discharge air temperatures and things such as that. Make sure it's visible on the BAS. Make sure it's visible on the BAS. If you did have BACnet connected to it, or Modbus, or LAN, or whatever it is that you have connected. Go back into your BMS communications menu, make sure that all those settings stay the same. And then like you mentioned, go back down to the BAS, make sure that everything is still visible there. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, there you go. How to update a Microtech 3. Thank you, Quentin. Always learn something good. Um, so hey, we love hearing back from you all. So if you guys have comments, we'd love to hear them. And hit that like, hit that subscribe. And we thank you guys for the support as we grow this channel. And uh, we'll catch you next time.